William, I just got a call from the hospital saying my parents were in an accident. I have to go now. It sounds like it's really bad. What? Right now? We were just about to go see a movie, remember? We already bought the tickets, and you were so excited about it. This is not the time to be talking about that. My parents could be in danger, and I don't care about some movie right now. My family's lives are at stake. Yeah, but isn't our time together just as important? Plus, we'd have to pay the cancellation fee for the movie. And honestly, even if I went to the hospital, there's nothing I can do. What do you mean there's nothing you can do? If you don't prioritize family at a time like this, what are you even prioritizing? Come on, no need to get that upset. Even if we go to the hospital, we'll just be waiting around. We won't know the situation until later anyway. So I think it's fine if we go after the movie. It's not like I'm not worried. But panicking now won't change anything, right? Are you seriously saying that, thinking it's the right thing to do? My parents might be in a dangerous situation right now. And you're worried about a movie and cancellation fees? Is that really so important? Well, yeah, it's important, right? I mean, I don't want us to lose out on our fun just because the situation suddenly got worse. We can't just throw everything aside, can we? Let's stay calm for a second. We can watch the movie, refresh ourselves, and then head to the hospital. I can't believe this. What does family even mean to you? Shouldn't we be supporting each other in a moment like this? Do you think my parents don't need anyone's support anymore? Is that it? No, that's not what I'm saying. But there are professionals in the hospital, right? I think we should just trust them to handle it. Besides, rushing over isn't going to change anything, right? Actually, I think we'd be more prepared emotionally if we took a little time for ourselves first. I can't even begin to understand that way of thinking. You're so selfish. All you care about is yourself, and you couldn't care less about family. Fine then. I'll go to the hospital alone. You can go enjoy your movie or whatever by yourself. Hey, I need to talk to you about something. What is it? It's the best news for me. Five million dollars in inheritance from your parents? I'm so glad I married you. Is this really the time to talk about that? We just finished the funeral yesterday and I haven't even had time to process everything yet. Why are you bringing up inheritance now? I get it, but both of your parents passed away suddenly in that accident, right? I know it's tough, but realistically, money can help heal some of that pain, don't you think? I can't understand how you think money can heal the loss of their lives. This isn't something that can be filled with money. Well... Once the inheritance actually hits our account, you won't be saying that anymore. Trust me, you'll be smiling without even realizing it. By the way, who told you about this inheritance? We haven't even had any detailed discussions about it yet. I heard it from Sarah. Why were you even talking to my sister about that? What happened? We just talked a little during the funeral yesterday. I was curious about the inheritance. She told me too. She said she was getting the whole $5 million inheritance for herself. What? What's that supposed to mean? Apparently, Dad wrote a will leaving everything to her. We haven't seen the actual document yet, so it's not confirmed, but... Wait a minute. Does that mean we're not getting a single cent? I don't know. I don't have all the details, so I can't really say. You're not seriously going to sit back and let Sarah have everything, are you? But if that's Dad's final wish, then maybe we just have to accept it. You're really okay with that? Your sister gets everything and you're fine with it? Well, it's not like I can ask Dad why he did it anymore, can I? No way. There's no way you're getting nothing. You should convince her to at least split it with you. Half would be fear, right? You think so? 
but I really don't want to fight with her over money. What are you talking about? It's five million dollars on the line. How can you just sit back and do nothing with that much money at stake? Even if I got that kind of money, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Money doesn't just bring happiness that easily. Come on, there's a ton of things you could use it for, like a new house or car. If you think about it, there are endless ways to spend it. We already have a house and a car, and I don't really need anything else. You've got to be kidding me. So you're fine with Sarah getting everything? I want to understand why Dad would do that, but if that's what he decided, maybe we just have to accept it. First, we need to confirm what's actually in the will. This is ridiculous. We're getting nowhere. We didn't have this money before, so why are you so upset about it? Why are you so indifferent about this? Anyone else would be more greedy. It's not like I don't care. Is this really the time to talk about this? The funeral was just yesterday. Both of them were gone in an instant because of the accident. I know it's hard, but money can help you heal. I don't understand the idea of using money to heal the loss of a life. Once you actually get the inheritance, you'll be smiling without even trying. By the way, who told you about the inheritance? It was Sarah. Why were you talking about that with my sister? We just talked briefly at the funeral yesterday. She told me too that she was getting the whole five million dollar inheritance. What? Apparently, Dad wrote a will leaving everything to her. We haven't seen it yet, though. Wait a second. Does that mean we won't get a single penny? I'm not sure. I don't really know the details. You're not seriously going to just hand over everything to her, are you? But if that's what Dad wanted, maybe we have no choice. You're really okay with that? Being treated differently from your sister and just accepting it? I mean, even if I wanted to ask Dad why, I can't now, right? There's no way you should get nothing. You should convince Sarah to at least give you half. You think so? I really don't want to fight with her over this. What are you talking about? This is five million dollars we're talking about. Even if I had that kind of money, I wouldn't know what to do with it. You could buy a new house, a new car. There's so much you could spend it on. We already have a house and a car. This is ridiculous. So you're fine with Sarah getting everything? I want to know why Dad would treat us differently. But if it's what he decided, maybe we just have to accept it. First, we need to see the will. This is going nowhere. It's money we didn't have to begin with, so why are you so disappointed? Why are you acting like you don't care? It's not that I don't care. Did he really leave all five million to your sister? You don't have to go that far. I'm divorcing you and marrying your sister. What? How does that even make sense? If I marry Sarah, I get the inheritance. I can't believe this. I can't stick around with someone who lets this opportunity slip by. What do you mean by chance? My parents just passed away. Shut up. Besides, I'm pretty sure Sarah would be confused if you suddenly started hitting on her. You don't need to worry about that. What do you mean? I'm popular with women. If she knows I'm your wife, she'll definitely reject you. I'll bring her a little gift. What gift? A paper where you renounce your inheritance rights. What? With that, you won't be able to claim any rights to the inheritance in the future. Sarah will be thrilled and welcome me with open arms. So if I sign it, you and my sister will get all the inheritance, and I'll be left with nothing, right? And you really think I'd quietly sign something that leaves me with such a miserable outcome? Then just be more greedy and go after the inheritance. If you do that, I'll stay married to you. So you're just chasing after whoever has more money. I'm done with this. Let's get divorced. 
Are you sure about that? Don't regret it later. If you think marrying her will bring you happiness, go ahead and do whatever you want. I'll be getting a lawyer, and I'm going to completely shut you out. Don't bother trying to fight it later. It'll be useless. Do whatever you want. I'll grab the divorce papers, so make sure you sign them. Whatever. Just sign the document to renounce your inheritance rights. I don't need to sign that. Don't worry, I won't make a fuss about it. Are you sure? Absolutely. This chat on WhatsApp will be proof, you know. I understand. Good. Now pack your stuff and go back to your parents' house. Hey, I've got something to ask you. You know the saying, strike while the iron's hot. So I assume you've already done it, right? Did you file the divorce papers? I filed it. You didn't need to remind me. Well, now we're officially strangers, or so I'd like to say, but you're still going to be my sister-in-law. Wait, what? I'm going to marry Sarah. What? I've always thought you were amazing. That's what she said. I guess I'm just irresistible. It's crazy that I've ended up tearing two sisters apart. Are you seriously getting married? Well, since it's only been a week since the funeral, we can't really have a wedding. But I'm thinking of at least getting the marriage certificate. I see. I saw the will and it's legit. Your dad left her $5 million. Incredible, huh? He used to run a business back when he was younger. In retirement, traveling around the country with mom was what kept him going. Do you want to know why he left it all to your sister? Was that in the will? Got your tissues ready? Wait, is it that bad? Actually, never mind. I don't want to know. Don't say that. I'm dying to tell you. Fine, go ahead. So, apparently, they spent way more money on you than on your sister because you went to a music conservatory. And there were all those lessons and prep classes. They probably spent a fortune on you. When you think about it from their perspective, it makes sense that they'd want to leave something for your sister. What is that supposed to mean? Yeah, I know the costs for conservatory and piano lessons were high. But still, leaving everything to my sister just because of that? Isn't that a bit extreme? It sounds like they think they spent more than enough on you already. Maybe they figured you didn't need anything else from them. Like, you've already had your share of their support, and there's nothing more you need from them. I guess, from their point of view, they were trying to balance things out. I get that the lessons and going to the conservatory were expensive. But the idea that I wouldn't inherit anything because of that? I never thought about it like that. Meanwhile... Sarah went from a public high school to a national university, right? Unlike you, she followed a pretty cost-effective path. And maybe that's why they wanted to reward her. Yeah, Sarah did choose a steady path and she didn't cause her parents much worry. They probably felt bad for her. It's a tearjerker, isn't it? That's what parental love is. Really pulls at your heartstrings. I'm sure you're literally smiling right now. What's so heartwarming about this? And I doubt you really understand how much my parents struggled. On top of that, the fact that your sisters had a crush on me all along? Talk about fate, right? It's scary how life works out sometimes. I guess it's just destiny that God brought us together. Don't expect me to agree with you. I never thought about it that way. And even now... I can't believe any of this. Well, after some time, we'll get married. I'm sure we'll see each other as family after that, so let's get along, okay? Don't say it so casually. The thought of becoming family with the man who left me for my sister is unbearable. Please stay away from her. Too bad. We are already engaged. I even gave her a ring, so there's no turning back now. Where did you get the money for that? 
from our savings. You know, the one we both have. What? Our savings? You didn't use that money, did you? Yeah, there were $60,000, so I used that to buy the ring. You've got to be kidding me. That was the shared savings we carefully put aside from both of our salaries every month. I just borrowed a little. Once we get the inheritance, I was planning to pay it right back, so there's no need to get so mad. Unbelievable. What is wrong with you? I had to show her I was serious with the ring, or she wouldn't have fallen for me. And once she saw that big diamond, her eyes lit up and she was mine. I guess she's always had a weakness for shiny things. Yeah, she's liked shiny things since she was a kid, but still. Now we're going to be happier than ever. Not that it matters to you anymore. If you're really going to be happy, then promise me you won't make Sarah cry. If you hurt her, I won't stay quiet. Also, I won't be associating with you as family anymore, so keep that in mind. Don't be so cold. We're starting a new chapter, and you don't have to be so distant. I just don't want anything to do with you. I can't stand being around someone who acts like they're happy my parents are gone. Just admit it. You're upset because your sister took me. If that's what makes you happy, then I have nothing left to say. Just don't regret the path you've chosen. Regret? No chance. I'm winning in life, and there's no way I won't be happy. Fine. Let's get the divorce over with quickly. What? I'll be wishing the two of you all the best from afar. Yeah, that was a bit formal, but thanks. You really hit me in the heart. I was a little moved, actually. All right, from now on, I'm going to be a good husband, too, and work hard to get as much money as I can. You keep doing your best, too. Hey, I've got some great news. The moment I've been waiting for has finally arrived. Oh, really? What's with the lack of interest? Don't you care? The inheritance finally came through. It took forever. Between all the paperwork and everything else, I was getting so tired of waiting. I never thought it would take this long. I had no idea the process, like probate, would be so complicated. I still don't get why it has to be such a hassle, but anyway, finally, my turn has come. I see. That's good. It feels like things have finally come to an end. Just to double-check, you're not going to suddenly say you want some of the inheritance now, right? If you pull something like that, things could get really messy. Pull something? No, I won't do that. Actually, now that it's all settled, I feel more at peace. After all, I already got my half. Just over two million, split between Sarah and me. What? Wait a minute. Are you serious? You're not supposed to have any inheritance rights. There must be some kind of mistake. It's no mistake. Since I didn't sign the renunciation, I obviously have the right to inherit. You've got to be kidding me. You promised not to fight for it in exchange for not signing that paper. Yeah, that was close. If I had actually signed that renunciation, I really wouldn't have gotten a single cent. That was a close one. I don't get it. What's going on here? No one told me any of this. You were just the poor guy who fell right into the trap Sarah and I set up for you. What? You two were in on this together? That's not fair. Yeah. At the funeral, you kept pestering Sarah, asking her things like, how much was the inheritance or there must have been quite a bit left, right? She was pretty disgusted. Okay, maybe I ask a bit, but what's wrong with that? That's why she lied on the spot, saying she was getting the whole inheritance. She just wanted to see how you'd react. You've got to be kidding me. And just like she predicted, you dumped me and brought her an expensive ring. She was annoyed, but then she came to me with a plan. 
She mentioned that she'd act like she's on board with it, but then she'd break up with you later. You were the only one who didn't know. You were getting played the whole time. No way. So you saw right through me from the beginning? Exactly. When Sarah said she thought you were amazing, that was all an act. In reality, she said you were disgusting, and she couldn't even stand the sight of you. Even pretending to date you was like some sort of hellish endurance test for her. So she really had a rough time with it. Oh, and that will you saw? Sarah made that up. It was completely fake. Everything was a lie. Why didn't you say anything? If you knew I was being played, you could have warned me. Huh? Why would I warn you? I don't have any feelings left for you, so of course I didn't. But still, I'm your ex-husband. You could have at least shown me a little pity. No, not even a little. Wait, what? You didn't offer a single kind word to me after losing my parents. All you cared about was money. And in the end, you jumped ship to whoever was getting the inheritance. If I'm going to worry about anyone, I'd rather spend an hour thinking about an ant crushed on the sidewalk. I'm lower than an ant. Thanks to you, I got divorced in record time. Wait a minute. Since you got the inheritance, I should have the right to half of it, right? Excuse me? I'm talking about the division of assets. I should have a right to some of it. That was close. I almost missed my chance. You know as well as I do that we were married, so I should get about half of that, right? Inheritance isn't subject to division between spouses. It's clearly stated in the law. What? Are you serious? I didn't know that. That's what my lawyer told me. I had it confirmed, so there's no mistake. Damn it. I didn't realize I was being so naive. Not only that, but you'll need to pay back at least half of the $60,000 you spent without permission. About that? You could probably sell the ring Sarah has, and that might cover it, right? You should be able to get some of the money back. Unfortunately, once you had your names engraved on the ring, its value dropped significantly. It's probably worth about one-tenth of what you paid for it now. You've got to be kidding me. That ring cost me $60,000. There's no way its value dropped that much. Stop lying. That ring was probably worth around $3,000 at best. Weren't you trying to scam Sarah too? What? You didn't know about Sarah's job, did you? She's a certified gemologist. And not just any gemologist. She has an international qualification and is one of the best in the world. No way. This is the first I've heard about that. That's why Sarah studied abroad. I may have made our parents spend a lot for me to attend the conservatory, but Sarah's study abroad expenses were just as high. So that story was all lies too. Exactly. You gave her a cheap ring and claimed it cost $60,000? Sarah was laughing behind your back. I thought women would be happy as long as you gave them a ring. That should have been enough. So what happened to the rest of the money? It's all gone, isn't it? Well, I spent it on a watch. Where did you buy something like that? I got it through a special connection. You can't just buy a Rolex these days, right? So I had someone hook me up through a special route. How much did it cost? It was $50,000. You're such an idiot. That watch is obviously a fake. What? Is there more? What are you trying to say now? Did you take some of the donation money from the funeral? I just can't shake the feeling. Huh? No, no. I don't know what you're talking about. I would never do something like that, right? Are you sure? The donation money from my boss, who I personally saw and thanked, has completely disappeared. And Sarah said some money from one of her friends is missing too. Maybe it was that lady at the reception. She seemed suspicious and untrustworthy. That lady you're talking about is my aunt, our relative. 
She told me you came by to collect the donation money after the funeral was over. Really? The money was probably already gone by the time I got there. That aunt of yours really is hopeless. Oh, really? Do you think that excuse will hold up with the police? What? Wait, are you seriously going to call the police? Isn't that a bit much? I checked with the funeral home, and it turns out they have a lot of security cameras. They said they'd be happy to cooperate with the authorities. Are you sure you want to do this? Wait, I'll be honest. I took about 20 envelopes containing the money. I'm sorry, I was wrong. So? I'm in a tough spot since I can't thank the people who supported me. Hurry up and give back what you took. It's all gone. I spent it all. I blew it on stakes and clubs, and now it's all gone. I can't believe this. I'll be sending you the bill for what you took, so be ready. Where are the envelopes? I hid them in the back of the closet. I couldn't find the right moment to get rid of them. Why didn't you just throw them out? It's hard to burn anything in the city, and you're so strict about sorting the trash that I thought you'd catch me. Bring them to me right away. If we don't do anything, we'll be disgracing my parents. Okay, I'll bring them right now. I'm billing you for everything, so get ready. There's no running away from this anymore. I'm really sorry. I swear, I'll pay it all back. Just don't get the police involved. I'm begging you. You'll be taking full responsibility for what you did. I have nothing else to say. Get ready. Afterward, William was reported to the police as a thief for stealing the donation money. Everything came to light much sooner than he had expected. This is exactly what it means to face the consequences of your own actions. William, who had been convinced he could escape, was detained by the police. But things didn't go as easily as he had hoped. In the end, he was found guilty of theft and his company immediately fired him. Naturally, there was no severance package. Word of his crime spread quickly within the company, and his reputation was completely destroyed. He was left in a position where he could never work in the same industry again. Abandoned by everyone, he faced complete social ruin. Of course, his dream of marrying Sarah was utterly shattered. Shortly after William's arrest, Sarah cut off all contact with him and disappeared without ever returning the ring. And honestly, who could blame her? No one would want a future with a man like that. As for William, the expensive watch he bragged about turned out to be fake, and he couldn't even sell it, leaving him deeper in debt. With all escape routes closed, all that remained was an enormous debt and a lonely life, abandoned by everyone. The man who once proudly declared himself a winner is now living almost like a homeless person, or so I've heard. I no longer have anything to do with him and am enjoying happy days with my children. Whatever happens to William now, it's no longer my concern. I sincerely hope to continue building new happiness from here on out. I'm done for today. I'm leaving now, okay? You're early. I'm going to be late. Working late again? Yeah, I guess so. I'm starved. Is there anything to eat? Just eat whatever we have at home. Huh? That's too much trouble. I'm tired from work. I'll just eat something on the way home. That's fine. Do as you please. I'm working too, you know. If you have a problem with it, why don't you do a little housework too, Julian? Hey, hey, my bad. I am Kendra, 42 years old, married for 10 years. We live together comfortably as a married couple, unable to have children because of my husband, Julian, who is six years younger than me. I have come to think that is fine because children are not everything. Instead, I am devoted to my work and have a full-time career myself. We have separate wallets, so we both live quite freely. Although he works diligently, he earns much less than I do, and he does not do any housework. 
When we first got married, he was younger than me, and I adored the fact that he was needy. I used to think I had to be there for him. But to be honest, being this busy every day has its limits. But now, instead of being a supportive partner, we are more like roommates, and our relationship has cooled off. Still, I married my partner because I love him. Of course, I still love him, and I had respected him. However... Hey, Meg. Huh? Meg? I can't drink anymore. You're drinking? Yeah, I know. I got invited. By one of our client's top people. I'm hiding in the bathroom. It's hard. Sounds like you've been drinking a lot. Are you okay? They made me drink a lot. Sorry about today. What's wrong? I told you I'd go out with you. It looks like I'm not going to be able to make it. What? A date? Don't be angry. I made you feel lonely, didn't I? I'll make it up to you. Make it up to me? What are you going to do for me? What do you want? I'll do anything. Anything? Anything. I'll do anything for you. Or maybe a trip? Even something expensive? Ah, but something cheaper than the bag I bought the other day. Anything over $1,000 is just for Christmas and birthdays. I see. You're a cheapskate, aren't you? Oh, don't say that. Let's go on a short trip, huh? A trip sounds nice. That might be exciting. Then we're all set. We're going on a staycation. Where are we going? Oh, yeah. Let's stay at a really nice hotel. I'm so excited. Hey, hey. Can I ask you something? What is it? What are we going to do on the trip? Tell me that you don't like music. You know? You know? Of course. It's going to be naughty. Really? I'm so excited just by imagining it. I got so hot talking about it. Maybe I'll go over to your house today. I can't stand it anymore. Your wife will get mad at you. It's okay, it's okay. She's not interested in what I do. Is that so? Yeah, she only thinks about work. I don't think she needs me. Well, I'm not really interested in her either. So... That's how it is. Of course, that's how it is. I'm not the least bit interested in my wife at all. She's an old lady. She's not even pretty. She's always acting like a big shot. Then why are you married? I just live with her because she makes a lot of money. Oh, I see. Even though she's a woman, she works really hard. She has money and a house. It's like, who do you think you are? That's great. It makes your life easier, doesn't it? That's true. But she's not cute. I don't feel comforted being with her. I see. For me, it's your comfort that I want. So can I come over today too? Today too? Uh-huh. I want to be there every day. I want to be with you all the time. Now? Yeah, I can't. When was it the last time you were here? Was it the day before last? Even if it had been every day, I still want to see you now. Comfort me, baby. I'm going over there to hold you. Hold me tight, Meg. But you're married. You'd better go home. Your wife's waiting for you. I don't want to. I don't want to go home. That's cheating. That's not cheating. I'm serious. I'll go back home to you. I want to be with you. If you divorce your wife, fine. Okay, I'll do it. I'll get a divorce. Are you sure? Of course. Absolutely? I promise. Okay, then. If you're going to get a divorce, you can come. Yay. That's my girl, Meg. 
You're so sweet. I'll see you later. <laughs> On that day, Julian did not come home as per his message. He must have gone to that Meg's house. It's a common mishap where he got drunk and mistook his lover's and wife's contacts. Julian didn't even notice. Or it was that he didn't contact me the next day. I was shocked and stunned. I was indeed unable to get any work done, so I went home earlier than usual. When I returned home, I saw Julian, who had apparently left early, slumped on the sofa in the living room sound asleep. He must have stayed up late the night before. And on Julian's phone, which was lying on the floor, were the messages still on the screen. A text from Meg with hearts all over it, and an attached photo of the two of them naked together. Probably a selfie. Disgusting. This is what all good things must come to an end must mean. Somebody made a mistake at work, so I'm off to a client's office. That's a lot of work, New York. What? Why? Just a hunch. I see. You're good. That's amazing. Yeah, it's New York. My coworker made a terrible mistake. It's going to take me about three days to figure it out. It's not going to be easy. Three days? You mean you're going to be there the whole time? I don't have a choice. It's my job. That's unusual. Your company doesn't do business trips at all. But to suddenly have to stay there for three days? What? Don't you believe me? It's my job. I have no choice. It's my boss's order. I can't say no. You're working too, you know that. I don't care, but why are you angry? I'm not angry. So, where are you going to stay? At a hotel near the airport. I'll find a cheap place. Okay. I haven't prepared anything. What about a change of clothes or something? I'm not a child. You don't have to worry about that. I'll take care of it. Okay, I see. You seem busy all of a sudden. If it's work, there's not much you can do, if it is work. Yeah, I know, right? It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a real mess out in the field. I won't be able to call you for about three days. I understand. I'll call you when it's done. Okay, fine then. I'm gonna be extremely busy for the next few days too. It doesn't make a difference. Good timing. I see. Good then. See you later. Kendra. Hey. I can't unlock the door. Why? Wake up. Hurry up. It's still morning. What's with all the racket? I've been up for a while. Then unlock the door. I can't get in the house. Which house? My house, of course. Don't be stupid. Where is your house? The house you live in. Where else would it be but this house? I know where my house is. Your house? Huh? I bought that condo. It's not your house, right? Huh? What are you talking about? Well, you may have bought it, but we're married, so it's my house too. We're a married couple, you know. I'm sorry to say... Anything you bought before you were married isn't included in the property division in a divorce. So that house is mine. I bought it. It's in my name. What the hell are you going on about? I don't care about any of that. It's your house, okay? Just get on with it and unlock the door. I mean, what? You just got home? That's right. Back in the morning? What a carefree thing to do. It can't be helped. It's work. Work, huh? Hurry up. I have to get dressed and ready. I'll be late for work. Hey, man. What the hell? Did you have fun in New York? How can I be fine if it's work? I was so busy for three days. I'm exhausted. If you're going all the way to New York, you should have stayed at the Moonlight Resort. What a waste. There's no way I would stay there. I'm on business and I stay in a hotel for young romantic couples like that. So, you know it's full of couples. 
How do you know that? Whatever, I don't care. Just hurry up and unlock the door. I'm going to be late for work. Too bad. Huh? The lock to the room in front of you where you probably are right now. I can't even open it anymore. Huh? I didn't have enough time to sell it, so I asked the real estate agent to rent it out for now. I'm sure they changed the locks. The real estate company manages the place now, so neither you nor I have access to it. Huh? What are you saying? I don't understand. So, I'll say it again. I only had three days, which wasn't enough time to sell it. So I had the real estate agency manage it and rent it out. It's a condominium for rent. Do you understand? Huh? Why are you renting it out? I get passive income from the rent. It's a little too big for one person. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? Are you kidding me? It's our house, right? I'm not joking. Stop joking around. Just open the door. I told you, I can't open it. They already changed the locks. I'm in a hurry. What am I going to do about work? I thought you'd be home last night. It really is too bad. That's... Well, you may have bought it, but... I didn't expect you to come home in the morning. If you had come home yesterday, you could have at least been ready to go to work. What could I have done? It's my job, so don't complain. If you were on a business trip yesterday, you at least have a suit. Why don't you just go? I'm gonna change clothes. Nobody's looking at your suit. Still, it's only natural to change as a matter of appearance, right? I see. Grab your big suitcase, wear your favorite sneakers, and a denim t-shirt. But then, you can't go to work like that, can you? What? How? How do you know? I'm the one who does all your packing and laundry, remember? I can tell what you don't have at home at a glance. Don't underestimate the knowledge of a housewife. What are you talking about? Just open the door. We'll talk later. You're relentless. You should have noticed by now. It's not the same as before. There's not even a name plaque, right? Do you see the umbrella stand and flower pots that used to be outside the front door? No. Do you get it now? I'm not there anymore. I moved out. Where? Where did you move to? The women's dormitory at work. I haven't been able to find a place to live yet because I made moving out the priority. I'm busy with work too. I'm living in the dorm until I find a place. My stuff. I didn't know what to do with it. I sent it to your parents' house for now. Huh? My parents' house? In New Hampshire? Yes. Do you have any other parents' homes? I told them what happened and showed them all the evidence. I told them to throw it away or keep it or do whatever they wanted with it. My mother-in-law seemed so ashamed. Poor thing. She didn't know what to do. Your father was furious, though. Of course, he would be, right? What have you done? I can't just go get it in New Hampshire now, can I? Oh, God. What am I going to do? I don't get it. You don't get it? The circumstances, the evidence. What the hell is that? You keep saying things that don't make sense. You must have some idea what's going on, right? I don't. You don't? Ugh. I'm late for work. It's your fault. Yeah, yeah, you can be late, but you have to go to work. I can't go dressed like this. You said you would be busy at work and couldn't be reached. I went to the trouble of sending you divorce papers and a content-certified letter demanding compensation to your office. I am so kind. What? Divorce papers? What are you talking about? You said we were breaking up. Who's separating from who? You and me. What? I didn't say that, okay? I'll break up with you just like you wanted. Just go ahead and sign the papers already. Huh? What the hell have you been talking about all this time? Wait a minute. I don't get it. To my office? You've been so busy that I couldn't reach you for three days. 
I had to send it to you at work because I was in a hurry. It's work, so there wasn't much you could do, was there? You were on a business trip, right? Stop screwing around. What are people going to think of me? I don't even have any luggage. What am I going to do now? Why don't you go see Meg? You want to see her every day, don't you? How do you know? What's with you today? Have you been stalking me? How is it a wife is a stalker when she knows stuff about her husband? You sent me the text yourself, didn't you? You sent it to the wrong address. Huh? You got drunk, mistook me for someone you were cheating with, and sent me a bunch of incriminating text messages. I was in shock, but I'm over it now. Thanks for leaving me plenty of evidence. Oh, uh, seriously? Oh, don't tell me you didn't notice. Scroll down and check it out. You mistakenly send those messages to me every time you get drunk. I can't believe you haven't even noticed at all. You really don't care about me at all, do you? Have you come up with an excuse? When you were sleeping the other night, I got to see your entire talk history with Meg. And naked pictures too. Disgusting. Huh? You saw that? You just left it there for anyone to see. You're so nosy. Well, I'm sorry about that. As a wife, I apologize. But who was the first to betray who? I've recorded all the incriminating talks and photos, so there's no point in erasing them now. Oh, hey, no, um... The person you cheated on me with is registered as Meg, and I'm Kendra. We look alike so it's hard to tell when you're drunk. You shouldn't have texted your lover when you were drinking. However, thanks to you screwing up your text messages, I was able to make up my mind and I'm grateful to you. While you were on vacation, I got the moving and immobilization paperwork done. Three days goes by so fast. I've been so busy. You've got to be kidding me. It's selfish to go around making decisions on your own. What? Selfish? Don't be ridiculous. When you were told you could come to her house if you divorced your wife, you're the one who said you divorced me in a heartbeat. I have proof. That's because I was drunk. I didn't mean it. There's no way I would say that seriously. You promised you would divorce me. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I was drunk. I just... I called the company and you lied about the business trip. Well, that's what I thought anyway. Huh? You called the company? I heard you took three days off with pay. I heard you and Meg were enjoying Moonlight Resort. That's very elegant. That's not true. It really was a business trip. There's no way I'd stay in a hotel full of couples like that for work. You said so yourself, you idiot. It's already obvious. Did you forget I'm in PR for Moonlight Resort? No, I mean, it wasn't my decision. You're blaming Meg. You're an awful man. No, it's not that. I saw on text that Meg wanted to go to Moonlight Resort. You've got some nerve cheating on your wife at her place of work. Even if it's at the same Moonlight Resort, you work at the head office in Tokyo, don't you? I was at Moonlight Resort yesterday for an interview. Jeez, are you serious? Yeah, it was supposed to be next week, but I saw that message, so I had to reschedule on short notice, all the way to yesterday. Seriously, you... Thank you for staying with us, and thank you for filling out the survey. It will be helpful for our future services. Huh? Wait. No, I mean... Your relationship... Lovers. Purpose of visit? Sightseeing. Couple plan for a double room with an open-air bath. You added a cake with room service as a surprise. The cake plate was for your two-year anniversary. You... you've got to be kidding me. You've been together for two years? You cheated on your wife for two years. More and more evidence is piling up. That's terrible. Oh, no. Of course, I've filed for compensation from Meg as well. Seriously? Of course. She was your subordinate at the same company, right? I didn't have her contact information. 
I sent hers to the company too. What? Oh no, seriously, don't do that. If they find out, it'll be bad. Then you'd better go to the office as soon as possible. I know it's a little late for that, but I sent a content-certified letter to your boss. What? What could I do? You were out of the office on paid leave, and I was told not to contact you. It was urgent, so I asked the boss who handled it. I sent it to your boss. I'm sorry. For what? It was just an impulse. I didn't mean it. After two years of cheating on me? I just... It was just a passing fancy. Oh, just stop it. I'm dead serious, you know. I'm sorry. I don't need an apology. You're not a child, so as long as you make it up to me in a proper way, then everything will be okay, and I want you completely out of my life. I won't do it again. It's fine, just as long as you leave me alone now. Don't say that. I mean, the house was mine to begin with. You make less money than I do. You never come home. You don't pay for any of the expenses and just use all your money as you please. When you do come home, you don't do any housework or cleaning, cooking, or even the shopping. You can't even have children. What good would it do for me to be married to you? Nothing, right? In fact, there are too many disadvantages. Merits, demerits. Don't talk like that. We're married. Yeah, I guess we were a couple if you could say that. It's my fault. I chose the wrong husband. I screwed up in the most important part. I'm not interested in you anymore, so let's just break up. Oh, come on. You've got to be kidding me. I'm so sorry. I just got a call from my mom saying she's going to throw my stuff away. I got one too. Of course, I told her to do whatever she wants, and I'm going to block you. I have nothing to do with you anymore. My boss is mad at me too, telling me to get over there as soon as possible. Meg also sent me a message saying she's breaking up with me. She's mad at me for getting charged for compensation. My boss says if I don't show up, I'll be fired. What am I supposed to do? Why don't you just go? Come with me and tell him it was all a misunderstanding and apologize to the company together. Kendra, please. I'm not a child. Give me a break. Food, shelter, bath. What am I supposed to do? What will I do about a suit? What am I supposed to do tomorrow? Huh? Where do I live? Where am I going to sleep tonight? You'll have to figure all that stuff out on your own. I'm not at all interested in that. How am I supposed to live on my own? You can do whatever you want. Maybe you're too uninterested to know. I'm not your mother, your guardian, or your housekeeper. Find someone else to feed and clothe you. Farewell. Kendra, please. Please wait. Help me. I'll never cheat on you again. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Julian, who had lost his home, could not even change into a suit. It seems he went to the office dressed as he was on his way back from the trip. While he was enjoying himself at Moonlight Resort, there was big trouble. As a grown adult, this is unthinkable. Julian had leaked company secrets to another company via an attached email. Although his bosses and colleagues at the company tried to contact him, in order to ignore my messages, Julian had turned off his phone and nobody could get through to him. He must have really wanted to enjoy the trip with Meg. However, he took the responsibility and was fired from his job. Julian, who had no money, no house, and no job, was quickly cut off by Meg. Julian had lost everything. I blocked him because of his daily annoying text messages. He was in need of money and wandered around in front of the women's dormitory every day. He was reported as a suspicious person and taken away by the police when he entered the premises. It took a long time, but I was able to get a divorce. I used the compensation I got from both of them as a down payment, and I bought a new house of my liking. Although I am now single, I have no problems because I can live a rich life with a passive income from my condo and my own earnings. I am determined to make my life more enjoyable. 
Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. It means a lot to us. See you next time.